Well, everybody, for those of you that stuck with us through that 10 minute trial, thank you for that because this is the Maple Leaf Squad for the upcoming season. We are going with Marner Matthews Nylander because we have to. Uh, we have Artemi Panarin with Freddie Gautier and Kasperi Kapanen. I'm really hoping that Kapanen and Panarin will uh, do very, very well next to one another. Third line, which really should be our second or first line, is Joffrey Lupel, Tyler Bozak, and Nazem Kadri. And a fourth line of Nathan Horton, Colin Smith, and Lucas Sutter. So, uh, it's promising. The defense, Morgan Riley, rocking a 94 right now, next to Griffin Reinhardt, which again is hilarious that we ended up with both Reinhardt and Panarin. Cheap as hell, but hilarious. Dmitry Orloff is with Martin Marincin. And the third pair of Brooks Orpik with Luke Shen. Get some grit. Of course, again, the goaltenders, Ben Skrivesna and UC Saros. We'll see what UC Saros can do at the NHL level. In the AHL, I do have to uh, optimize these lines really quickly. Uh, but the left wing side is going to be Dimitro Timoshoff, Carl Grundstrom. Is rocking that medium top nine. Uh, we also have Julian Pelletier. And John Kurtz will be replaced by Jesse Pugliarvi. It was a medium bottom six at this stage. At center. It is Jens Locke, medium top six, 75 overall, with Andreas. Oh, the menu's glitching out again. Okay, there we go. It's really weird how that happens. Andreas Janssen, second line center. Uh, third line center is Clark Bishop. Rocking a high bottom six still. And fourth line center, Nikita Korostelev. And on the right... Matt Highmore will be out for Andre Kasha, who will be on that top line as a medium top six. Then we have Philip Schlopik with the low nine, Connor Brown, and Patrick. Line A. Why do I hate 24 so much? I don't hate it. It's just not good, so I don't play it. Defense is Renat Valiev at a high four. And the high elite, Andrew Nielsen. Then you have Matt Spencer, who is a medium top six. Yeah, potentials definitely fluctuate a lot. Uh, he will be next to Gustav Forsling. He's also a medium top six. And then that third pair changes completely uh, with Tanner Faith subbing into the lineup. Menus are glitching out on me here, though, fortunately. Uh, but medium seventh, Tanner Faith, so his potential drop too. And Boroman will be out for Eric Chernock, uh, who is rocking a medium top six. Oh, smell it. Dude, I'm asked about NHL 24 on a daily basis. On a daily, daily basis. <laughs> Which is okay. I mean, that's what I expect. You know, this is the time of year that I'm supposed to be playing the hell out of that video game, and I'm not. And that's uh, EA's fault. <laughs> Basically. No other way to put it. That is EA's fault. But yeah, we uh, should be good to go. Only thing I have to do again is set up the trade block, which we'll see how many times we get offers for... Uh... <laughs> we'll see how many times we get offers for scrub goaltenders. My guess is a lot. I could take away the ability for them to offer me trades for Morgan Riley, and I probably should. So, yeah, we'll say... Uh... Any defenseman sub 85 overall is available. And we will further optimize this trade block if we have to. But we can at least see what kind of offers we get throughout the year. Again, I wish there, it's to this day, I wish there was a preset. Save what you want. And that way, when it, or you could just have it not change the goddamn shit for you at any time. That would be nice too. Go up to a 70 this time. But if you are going to change it, for the love of God, 
Give me a damn preset so I can just change it back immediately. <laughs> the idea that it can just change the dragon block for you. It's been every game ever that does it, too. It is so damn annoying. I had a feeling I forgot to scroll down on the age there for forwards. Still looking for prospects at this stage. And goalie-wise... Give me players with good potential, please. And half-decent OVRs if you're going to bother me for trades all day long, which you're going to because that's what the AI do. But, yeah, all in all, I, again, think we rebounded really well from what was a uh, rough-looking draft. Our ratings, 88, 91, and a 79. It's too much time and energy for EA to have someone create a proper roster. Uh, it's either laziness or lack of funding. That's it. That's it at this point. It's either sheer laziness and just not viewing it as a big deal, or it's just not wanting to dedicate and allocate money to somebody because I hate to tell you it's a one person job is all it has to be. Whether or not it's me snipe and score Whoever the fuck. There are enough people out there to do it all themselves to prove that one person can do the job properly. They just choose not to do it. So, it be what it do. It be what it do. All right, in terms of our captains, because we haven't looked at this too much, it has Morgan Riley with the C, which to be honest, yeah. Right? Ooh. Ooh. Ooh, hold on. Hold on. Alternate Captain Morgan Riley. Alternate Captain Austin Matthews. Captain Nazem Kadri. <laughs> it's perfect. Captain Naz. I don't know why Bozak's complaining about losing a letter. Did he even lose a letter? Kadri will lead us from the press box come playoff time because of a suspension. But Nazem Kadri, the new captain of the Toronto Maple Leafs. You'll love to see it. We went 1-5-1 and one in the preseason. This could be a very, very rough season. A very, very rough season. Ben Scrivens broke his toe in the first game of the year. Oh, well, that's not good. That's not good at all. Uh, congratulations to Nick McBride, who is going to get the call up, at least for the moment. Um, I don't even know if he's ever suited up in a fucking AHL game yet. And now he'll be playing in an NHL game. And we'll put Rob Medor. In there, I need to sign a fifth goalie. Five nothing loss as Soros gets lit up. Let's go over to free agents. We'll sign a uh, a veteran goaltender as the fifth option. Wow, Steve Mason, Ryan Miller, they're both still out there, huh? Damn. Well, let's not end uh, Ryan Miller's career on a low note like that. Let's see if Ryan's willing to sign and uh, he can be the kind of third string goalie for the team in the meantime. I guess it's Austin Matthews that we're going to be bugged about now. Yeah, we're not taking that trade. Two first round picks and Adam Musel. No. We're going to get so many trade offers for Austin Matthews, aren't we? Happening. Forgot how needlessly basic the 15, 16 next gen UI was. Oh, yeah. It's, uh, it is about as simple as it can possibly be. All right. We will swap. Oh, they took away the swap option. Call up Ryan Miller and drop McBride back down to the AHL. Uh, so let's get Ryan Miller in there with UC Soros for the moment. 
And in the AHL, get Mador out of there for McBride. Beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful. One and three on the season. The only game that we won is the game where Ben Scribbins broke his toe. Capping in two thirds for a second and third, and Adam Musel. No. Fetter Gadeev for a fourth and a sixth. I mean, I pretty much have to say yes to that. 54 overall, 18 years old, medium AHL top two. I have to say yes. Like, yeah, there's a chance Gadeev could develop, but. That's a no-brainer to accrue extra draft picks for an AHL potential defenseman. Even if it is one Federer Gadeev. We need the ability to lock a player into their line so you can best lines and injury manage quickly without losing your shit. No, we don't need that. We like menu management. That'd be a great idea. Foot and Vevelinen for a second is basically what we're looking at. I'm going to say no. Cal Foot's worth more than the second round pick. As Benjamin Skrvesanin is back, he will replace Ryan Miller. Because, again, Ryan Miller's here to be a backup goalie. <sighs> Cal Foot, Nick Hague in a second for a first and a third from New Jersey. Again, Foot's not bad. 57 overall at 18 years old, medium four. Haig in this game is a non-factor. I got to take it. I got to take it. I mean, it gives us a chance in the future to try and get somebody better than Cal Foot. Maybe it's someone exactly as good as Cal Foot. In which case, it would basically become a second in Haig for third, which is a bit of a loss. But I'm going to take it. I'll risk it. We'll send Cal Foot. Ben Scrivens broke his toe again. <laughs> Uh, that's basically Philip Ronick for second round pick swaps, which we're not going to do. My God, we're just going to get bothered about Connor Timmons now. Morgan Frost for two fourth round picks. Nice spot. What's up, by the way? Uh, medium bottom six at 18 years old, 52 overall for Frost. He was a fifth round pick, though. Turning a fifth rounder into two fourths. We'll take that as well. Deal Morgan Frost out of here. We're not trading Austin Matthews. He should stop kicking the goalpost, right? Two firsts from the Sabres for Matthews. Not going to happen. We're actually 8-6-0 and oh right now. Ooh! Two seconds in Vieni Vevelinen for a first and a fourth. Hello! I mean, Vevelinen's a low AHL starter. Now, here's the thing. Vevelinen's an intriguing goalie. 73 overall at 20 years old is pretty damn good, but he doesn't have the potential. So we could lose this trade if his potential skyrockets. That's a bit scary. But two seconds and a former sixth round pick for a first and a fourth. You got to take the first. Like, do we want to bank on Veveline and developing or try to get more of a sure thing? You go for the sure thing. So we'll take that trade as well. Ben Scrivens is back. So we have picked up some extra first rounders here already. Got Scrivens back in there for Miller. Again, we don't want Miller to play too much because he might make us too good, clearly. Not trading Kasperi Kapanen in the St. Louis. I do wonder, though, Vevelin, and if you could get a guy like that to develop and grow in potential, just how good he could be. Because that age overall combination was really good. Matthews for two firsts. <laughs> Adam Musel. The Blues are just desperate to make a deal with us. Not trading Austin Matthews for Max Jones. Not trading Kasperi Kapanen. Uh, our AHL starter, Nick McBride, going to be out until February with concussion issues. That is not good for the sake of his development. Does mean that Herbst becomes the starter. Bruins trying to absolutely rob us for Kasperi Kapanen. Connor Timmons for a fifth and a seventh. Again, it's a no-brainer. Timmons was a seventh. 49 overall at 19 years old. Low AHL top six in the AI. The logic of the AI is, boys, we need to trade for that guy. You watch. We're going to fleece him. Well, good luck with that, New Jersey. I hope it works out for you. <laughs> 
Christ, that's dumb, dumb, dumb AI management. And it's not any better in NHL 24. Unfortunately. Not trading Kasperi Kapanen. Player morale thing's an interesting idea. It just needs to be implemented better. Correct. Correct, correct. I mean, again, players should have personalities. Coaches should have personalities. The AI GM should have different personalities and different ways that they look to improve the team. It's just not fleshed out enough. Dimitro Timoshoff goes down to a concussion. We're not trading a Kapanen or Matthews. Ooh, we could take a different approach. Recoup a first and a third for Liljegren. It was our second overall pick. 63 overall at 18 years old, medium top four. Do we think we could land somebody better with that pick than what Liljegren already is? And the answer is probably. Like, I feel like we could get a player like this at any point in the first round. Like, the odds of this pick becoming at least Liljegren are pretty good. The odds of it being someone better than Liljegren, pretty good. I'm going to take it. Second overall pick. We're going to send him to the Islanders. Liljegren's been dealt. So, I think going to shut down, wasn't he at 55 when we drafted him? Maybe? He could have been that low and developed quite a bit in the offseason, but... Like I said, I feel like we have a pretty good chance of getting someone equally as good, if not better. So, I think it's worth the risk. We've gotten some good player development this season already. Line A has cracked to 70. Valiev and Nielsen. That's the thing, too. We have Valiev. We have Nielsen. Like We have two really, really good defensive prospects who are on the cusp already. So... The prospect pool that we have, I think, is allowing us to be aggressive more than I was planning. We are over 500 as well right now, too. Well, 19, 17, and 4. And then we start losing. So. Dude, the Bruins are just constantly trying to rob us. This one's probably a no. I'm going to politely decline that trade. Turns out PLD could be on our NHL roster right now. <laughs> Who knew? He'll be here next year. We'll give him another season to just ruin lives in junior. So that'll be fun. Christ. The player development in this game is wild, man. And honestly, I like it a lot. You just have these players that can take these massive steps forward Instead of, on average, like, oh, my player grew by, like, three, four overall points. It's it's fun. It can totally change the outlook of your team, which is what happens. Matt Patra for the Bruins completely changed the outlook of what they were expecting to be. We are going to deal Philip Ronick to Calgary, though, for a fourth and a seventh. That's a no-brainer. His potential sucks. So, we just continue to rack up. Mid-round picks. And we continue to not trade Austin Matthews. <sighs> Basically, Luke Shen for Jesse Gabrielle in a fifth. It makes us worse, which is good. We get a draft pick for Shen, who's just your typical third-pair defenseman. And again, when we signed him, he was like a mid-70s because his morale was down. He's bounced back to an 81. He's on a great contract. Um, I don't really think there's any reason to not trade him, even though it's only technically for a fifth. Gabrielle's a 71 at 20 years old. He's someone who could develop. Um, we're going to take that. A third and Luke Shen for a third, Gabrielle and a fifth. And we will send Luke Shen to Boston. Again, I do feel like that is a pretty straightforward trade. And that'll get Frankie Corrado into the lineup. Valiev's almost ready to go. Um, Boriman's been a scratch. 
So we'll be able to call him up. And then over for forwards, we know that we can send down Jesse Gabrielle. Beautiful. All right, so NHL-wise, let's get Corrado in here. Elander up to an 82. Matthews at an 88. Marner's up to an 81. 96 overall. Morgan Riley is still just crazy to see. And then AHL, nothing changed for that lineup. Good. Good, good, good. Not trading Austin Matthews unless we accidentally hit the button. Our AHL starter, Nick McBride, is finally back from injury. Herps now has 31 games played. He hasn't been amazing, so I almost wouldn't expect the Marlies to make the playoffs this year, given that they're around 500, 25, 26, and 1. I'm actually enjoying this franchise a lot more than I thought I would. I'm like, oh, God, NHL 16. Maybe they didn't make as many improvements upon the previous year as I remembered, but no, it's pretty good. So we get to deadline day. We're definitely not trading Howden. Yeah, 27, 25, and 9. We are dead last in our division right now. There should be potential maneuvers to make here. Hopefully. Man, Ian Scott, though, up to a 72. Ian Scott went high elite. <laughs> Fuck you, Stuart Skinner. That draft's looking better by the minute. Ian Scott's potential went up from high starter to high elite. Let's fucking go. Whew. Defensively, there's really nobody with value that we'd want to move. At best, it would be like Dmitry Orloff, but he's not going to fetch us that much. You could maybe argue Marty Marincin, but we might as well keep him. Um, or actually, 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 actually. Are there any players out there that we'd want to get? I think the Ducks are still selling Jones. They're not. They changed their mind. Are there any good prospects out there? The Bruins. Buffalo's trying to move on. Ooh, they pissed off Evander Kane. Go figure. Buffalo's trying to move Luke Kerwin. It was not that bad. Are there any really good prospects that we could target here? Jake Krisky. He's about the same as Kerwin, though. Right? Yeah, honestly. I mean, Kerwin's a year older, but he's two points better. It evens out. Patrick Sharp. Daniel Sedin. So I guess both Sedins did end up on Detroit. A lot of teams are looking to trade veterans. Looks like a lot of people are in prospect acquiring mode right now. Islanders aren't trying to move anybody. Rangers are trying to move. Rangers are trying to move the defending Calder winner. Oscar Lindbergh. Philly. Bakaninen. Vlasic. Yeah, I think we could get Vlasic and sign him to a seven-year deal. What's the worst that could happen? Henrik Sedin went back to Vancouver? Uh, at the time, it didn't show you who the hell they played for. Winnipeg. Washington. All right, well, if we were to trade anybody, yeah, it would be to get Luke Kerwin from Buffalo. I mean, Marty Marincin right now on defense would be the guy to deal. There's an argument for Nazem Kadri, but he's got five years left. It was always Daniel? All right, fair enough. Timoshoff, Panarin. Joffrey Lupul is certainly someone to trade right now. Gautier Bozak is also on the final year of his deal. So Bozak... Lupul. Marty Marincin. Just a bunch of dudes on expiring contracts who we don't necessarily have to bring back. 
Is there anybody else on an expiring deal that we'd want to get something for? We know Orpic is pretty much stuck here. Horton has an extra two years left. Jesus Christ. We got Lupo, Bozak, Marin, and Kadri doesn't have to go anywhere. Aside from those two, it's Panarin and Orloff that we'd be intrigued by. Um, it looks like, honestly, the Sabres would have the, the space. Skaters matching the block. We take back Leitinen. Uh, and we take on Bell. Now they'd be over the cap. So we retain on Joffrey Lupel. Let's see how fast this will scroll for us. Might as well just go to 50. They'd still be over the cap, really. Or is that glitched? Let's retain on Bozak, too. I don't know if I can retain on one or two contracts at this point. Can I retain on all three of them? And they're all up at the end of the year. Okay, yeah, so I can't do Marinchin, but the other two are okay. Would have just been faster to take Marty off the list. So if we take out Bell, I need somebody that is making money. Mark Pissick. He'd still be over the cap. So 1.2 wasn't enough. Yannick Weber. Okay. So Bozak and Lupel on 50% retained, and Marty Marincin, all three of them on expiring deals. For the best prospect available on the market right now, which is power forward Luke Kerwin, who was 15th overall. Is there anything else I can add to this? I mean, there's no way I can get a first in this as well, right? Yeah. Can I get their second next year? All right. We'll try for their third this year. So Bozak, Lupel, and Marincin to Buffalo for Kerwin, Leighton, and Weber, and a third. They'd say yes, but they'd have to put Casey Nelson on waivers. So instead of Leighton, Casey Nelson... Is a somewhat promising defenseman, actually. He's pretty similar to Marincin. Um, what other NHL defenseman do you have right now? It would pretty much have to be Tate Casey Nelson. Shit. Having to take on Nelson hurts a bit. Or any unsigned prospects that have value higher than what it should be. We're not giving up on Nolan Patrick right now. Kachuk's up to a 77. Veselinen's a 70. Cliff Poo, I mean, the value is not even that high. What if we use the Boston third? We might not be able to get this deal to go through because of Casey Nelson. And now they're mad because they'd have to put Matt Molson on waivers. Fuck. Take Yannick Weber out. I need a forward playing at the NHL level. Nick Delorier has the lowest value. Let's try to get Nick Delorier then. Now they'd be over the cap. Fuck. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> this deal is turning into a nightmare. Um, all right. Instead of... Well, no, because the other prospect was more valuable than Kerwin because he was a year younger. That's why we went after Buffalo. I feel like I'd have no choice but to try to get Evander Kane out of this deal. Which kind of sucks. He's way too valuable, too. Uh, let's go talk to... Who was the other team that had that prospect? Colorado? It wasn't Colorado. It was Colorado. Jake Kriske. Let's see if we can get Kriske. The hardest you've worked on a deal in a while. Mm. Let's see if we can get Kriske. Um, in terms of other dudes, Dennis Everberg. 
Take him back in the deal. We can take on Cody McLeod. Deal approved right out of the gates because they don't have the cap trouble. So Bozak, Lupul, Marinchin for Kriski, Everberg, and McLeod. We are going to have to add something still. We'll go with the Boston third. Shit, man. Again, the value might be a problem. What about two-thirds? There it is. Okay. So Tyler Bozak, Joffrey Lupul, Martin Marinchin, and two-thirds to Colorado for Cody McLeod and Dennis Everberg, who are tack-ons. Uh, the main thing is we use three pending UFAs who, at best, we bring back Marinchin and two-thirds to get one of the best prospects on the market. That is Jake Kriske, and it makes our team worse for the rest of the season. I feel like that was a pretty good deal for us. Three, four, five, six. Uh, so Renat Valiev, who's up to a 79. He and Nielsen both are in the running. But it's going to be Renat Valiev, I would say, that gets the call up to the NHL level for the rest of this season. And um, we'll actually send down Gustav Boroman. I don't know if I have time to sign a veteran. But we'll go best lines. I do have time to sign a veteran. Andre Mazaros. Who else do we have for defensemen? It's got to be a defender. Mazaros, Kindle, Oduya, Ben Sherratt. Um, Johnny Oduya's out there as a veteran. And Tom Volchenkov. Mm. Let's go for Ben Sherratt. That's a pretty good meme. See if I can just sign Ben for the rest of the season, have him be the seventh defender. And then for the forwards, now that we've gotten rid of some forward talents, let's see. I mean, Everberg and McLeod can play there for the rest of the season, unless we got some uh, other guys that can get the bump. Let's see. It's not the song that I wanted. It's not the song. That Give me the song, Spotify. Thank you. Christ. Anyway. 12, 13 with bleed. Could really make the argument that like Timoshoff deserves a chance for the rest of this year. Timoshoff and Andreas Janssen, but we'll leave the Marlies together and go with kind of the veteran based forward lines for the rest of the season. So we're keeping on best lines for the moment. Sim past the deadline. Get that defenseman signed. And again, that should make us work uh, worse for the rest of the year and should work in uh, getting us, again, top odds. At least I hope. But let's see. Ben Sherratt. Taz, what's going on? How are you? It's Taz. Let's call up Ben Sherratt. So let's see. Again, we'll go best lines. So Horton can be up over him, but I digress. Ty Crest Jones over here. Um. Yeah, we can have McLeod, Sutter, Everberg. And uh, I hate to say it for Nazem Kadri, but we're still going to have him on the third line. Just to prioritize other players here. The other youth, since we already know what Captain Kadri happens to be. Defense. Again, we don't want Ben Sherratt in there. We want Renat Valiev. Put Orpik with Corrado. I'm going to put Valiev with Morgan Riley for the rest of the year. And just throw Renat Valiev to the Wolves. Get him as much playing time and NHL experience as we can. Scratch Ryan Miller again. And then AHL-wise, McBride and Herbst. Ooh, McBride's up to a 76. Man, player development in this game is fucking fun. Just because whatever you're planning of like, oh, okay, this guy's a part of the core. Somebody else can develop pretty quickly and all of a sudden be a, a factor in your plans a lot more than expected. Gotta get Pugliarvi in there. We can take out Highmore, who has been developing despite the fact that he hasn't played. And then Vale can be out for Clark Bishop. 
And we'll just leave that as it is. But yeah, the AHL is actually looking pretty good. Line A has gone from like, what, a 68, 69 up to a 72? Telling you. Things are building up pretty damn well here in Toronto.